Greetings, world. Us hairy game lords this evening. I've been playing this. Library of Jackarth by Rule Factory. It's a prototype, but what would we think? Hipster King here with uh, my th uh, with the overview of Library of Jakar. So basically, it is a dungeon crawler. You um, are play You are all playing wizards or mages, um, and you are going to be moving through the dungeon, trying to find five keys in the library that will then allow you to leave through the door you came through. Um, and if you are the first person to get back that space with five of the same colour keys, you are able to escape the labyrinth and everybody else gets locked in. Sounds easy, right? Well, there are a number of things that are going to make it more difficult for you. For a start, there are all the other players. They are all trying to do the same thing and they are going to be trying to stop you. Um, <laughs> they can do that by blocking you in, putting magic fire beside you, which is going to take some of your cards away. Um, they can move things in your room so that the route that you need to get through means that you lose much more of your movement. Um, and Murder. probably they can literally kill you. Um, now, we don't really like player elimination and this is good because it isn't player elimination. You die, but in the labyrinth, the library, you do not die for long. You miss a turn, you lose a card um, and actually... Dying can almost be good, or not as bad as it would otherwise be, because if you have any of the guardians who are the um, kind of protective spirits or sort of owl-like um, creatures that uh, protect the labyrinth, here's the purple guardian. I don't know his name or her name. Um, it's Dave, apparently. <laughs> um, Dave, the purple guardian. Um, <clears throat> these guys come out um, at certain points in the game they get re revealed on tiles and they also can get revealed through curse cards which we'll talk about later because they are brilliant um, and the guardians at the end of your turn if you have a guardian token on your board because you found them or you have you, they are focused on you and they are going to go after you and if they reach you they will kill you now good news is if you've got a guardian or other guardians chasing you you are able to refocus them when you die. So everybody else has to roll their dice and potentially they will get the Guardians focusing on them and chasing them. So there are a number of ways that you can influence the game to upset other people. Um, this game is just so much fun. Um, it, it, we, we played a five player game. We, it, we were learning as we go, to be honest, although it didn't take much learning. It was a really simple game to pick up. Um, it took probably five players about two to two and a half hours to play. And you might be thinking, oh, two and a half hours, that's a long time. The, it was just fun the whole way through. Um, it's one of those games that immediately brings stories. The times when <laughs> I rolled a 12 and yes, I've got a 12. I have, I'm not getting that Guardian. And the, the dice go across the table. Martin rolls rolls a 12 as well um we had a couple of we had at least a couple of sets of snake eyes as well which was horrendous um hilarious. and <laughs> hilarious no i rolled them so it was horrendous uh <laughs> hilarious for everybody else so you have all those swingy moments but actually uh, dave no we all when we were looking at the end uh once the person who won one, we were all having a look, and actually most people were in probably one turn, or at worst two turns, of winning. They'd all got the keys, and it was just about getting back to that end point and avoiding the Guardians. And so, actually, despite playing for two hours, being spread all over the board, all doing different things, collecting at different times, using different spells, we were all about one turn, one and a half turns off winning. So actually, for something that is ridiculously swingy and sort of felt ridiculously swingy, this was really well balanced. And the stories, the fun that came out, oh my days, two massive thumbs up. This is just brilliant fun. Check this out when it comes out on Kickstarter. This for me is what Kickstarter should be about. Absolutely brilliant fun games. There's, you know, relatively new designers, prototypes like this coming out to reviewers to, uh, and, and just having a blast around the table with your mates.
Slightly Birdie James. So, um, as Peter said, it is, uh, it is light, this is fun, it is swingy. The first thing that I thought when I saw this game is, it's roll to move. Ah! You roll your dice and uh, you can get 12 movement points or you can get three movement points. Some brilliant moments in the end game where Martin limped around <laughs> the, like the edges of the library being pursued by three guardians. It was brilliant. Uh, but that's what rerolls are for. And so it was fine. It's fine. Um, now, this game, I think, is, is really interesting. Because it is, it's not like one of these kind of blockbuster games that you'd see where everything's so beautifully thought out and the, the whole design kind of leaves you feeling like you've played something beautiful. It's, it's raw, it's fun. I mean, there might be some stuff that changes because this is a prototype. But the whole thing with this game is, um, it's just brought us such a great amount of joy around the table tonight. Um, I have been the source of that joy because <laughs> I um, very, very visibly did amazing. Now, I, the whole idea is you're collecting these keys, you're going to get these cards from the, um, from the bookcases, and so you're trying to kind of randomly pick up loads of stuff. Some of them's actions, some of them's keys, some of them's actions and the keys. And uh, I got myself a load of great stuff really early on, and... Um, at one point, made a bolt for the exit and stopped just short. And all of the guys around the table went, Ugh! <laughs> and the murder eyes came out. And suddenly I was villain number one for the rest of the game. And I've been cursed and beaten and master killed and uh, <laughs> everything. And oh, the, the most frustrating thing was, so you can get these blessing cards, these holy relics. Did I see one of those? No. They gave me curses. Cursed relics. Uh, the first cursed relic gave me uh, minus one on all my rolls. Now, minus one doesn't sound very much, but when you're trying to move the shiftable part of the library so you can get out to the exit and you're rolling dice and you're stuck behind this thing whilst the, uh, the guardians are coming at you, it is frustrating. But it was hilarious at the same time. And then, it was, it was. It was beautiful. It was. I shifted the wall uh, and got lucky. And they thought, we've got ages. Uh, and so they went around taking their turns. And I played a beautiful card. Please don't get rid of this card in the new version. It's called Dibs. You can copy someone's um, uh, looting effect or movement. Andrew rolled 11 movements. And I went, Dibs. And <laughs> legged it out of this kind of little hole in the, uh, the edge there. Uh, just in time to have my car stolen, but that's another story. Uh, this game is so much fun, and um, for a game which is about kind of like rolling dice and moving spaces, like, I don't know, I'd say about 10, 15 minutes in, I'd forgotten that, and the game was just like, I don't know, it was, for all five of us around the table, nobody felt like they were hard done by, apart from Dave, but that is Dave's story for gaming is gaming with us he's always feeling hard done by but then he locked himself from the de depths of the uh, library and survived very nicely so i i can't wait to see what they do with this because like everything that you'll see from the pictures in this it's going to change the components going to be upgraded it's going to be really nice and yeah this is what kickstarter is for hi dave the gray <sighs> what a game um as these guys have said this is perfect kickstarter game um and to be honest we've been playing with thin cardboard tokens on thin cardboard cards but knowing it's a prototype and being able to see the potential in a game like this is awesome um and i think the game that it puts me most in mind of and this might seem quite strange because it's a completely different sort of format is probably nemesis because this is a game about building the story. The bit where James seemingly miles ahead had all his keys. So I locked myself in the far corner of the library behind the bookcase hiding from the Guardians. And if you manage to cut off the route that the Guardians can take to get to you, so they can't physically get to you at all, they redirect. So I was just like, nope, nope, I'm behind a bookshelf. You can't see me, nothing to see. Well... I'd actually got 
my five keys and I'd got a card that let me move two tiles from over there to, and just I could have swapped myself to right next to the entrance while I had also had some magical fire that I summoned oh. right round James so he couldn't move without going through the magical fire. Uh, I can just see that this is going to be a game about building stories and in the same way that every time I think I've played Nemesis or Lockdown, there's always stuff that you remember a year down the line. It's a, do you remember when? And last time we played this, you did that and that to me. I'm going to get you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I think, what this game is going to do because I think we'll all walk away with, do you remember when we did this? And do you remember when that... And that is all you want from a game, really. If you can walk away and in six months' time you go, let's play that again because I still owe you for the time you <laughs> summoned magic fire around me as I was legging it to the entrance and then Martin killed James <laughs> just as he was like, ah! And his heart stopped and he fell over. And then Pete snuck in for the victory like the dirty dog he is. That is all you want from a game. Across a um, <laughs> so, yeah. Rolling some magic speed dice. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't really matter what the game plays or does or is. If you walk away going, I'm going to remember this game for ages. And I think every time you play this game, you will get that. I can't see how you would not. So, absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see what the final look is and I can only wish them well in Kickstarter because this is just a truly awesome game. You need to get behind it. And two possibly I'll put I'll put my toes Whoa. up as well. Whoa. Definite Whoa. as Whoa. as many limbs as I have are going up for this game. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. And that one. <laughs> and it's the bearded lady here. Oh absolutely Brilliant, this game. Yes, creates a story, creates uh, an experience. And that's the kind of game that we love. As uh, as Dave said, it reminded me of the experiences that one gets from Nemesis uh, and just the, the depth of story that's created. Amazing. So there's different cards that you can collect through the game. Uh, most of the tiles are these blue tiles uh, and they have bookcases in them um, where you can get general kind of general stuff. So you, you you loot a bookcase, then you have to put a cobweb on it. Can't be looked at again unless there are certain spells that allow you to do so. But you get two cards from those. There are red squares, uh, red tiles that means that you can get better stuff. And some of those, some of the uh, the spells were awesome from those red looted uh, rooms. And then there are curse cards. And what Ooh. we did was we avoided, like the plague, the curses. curse cards. We're like, no one wants a curse card. No one wants a curse card at all. Until we were like, hey, James, just pick up the whole curse card and read the bottom curse card. So we get a feel for what the curse cards are like. And he read out an absolute amazing card that said all players have to pass four cards to the right. And we were just like, oh my word, these curse cards, they sound amazing. And with that, with him reading out that card, he sealed, <laughs> he sealed his demise. Curse you, curse cards! <laughs> because all of a sudden, uh, both Martin and I were stood right close to curse locations. If you end your movement, on a curse location, you are cursed. You pick up a curse card. So that's what happened. I uh, picked up a curse card. It was rubbish straight away. I lost <laughs> two cards. I was like, ah, oh, this is pants. Um, but then what happened was Martin did it, and and it made everybody have to move one one location, which therefore meant that I was on another curse. Um, and what was brilliant was is that James, in that one location, moved onto the the wind space. He's got his five keys. He's on the wind space. All he needs to do is wait for his go to trigger a reaction so that he can win. But out came a curse card, which was that I got that was called the Switcheroo Curse. Oh. <laughs> hey. 
where I could switch a player with another player's location. Guess where James was going? To the furthest part away from the exit as possible. Amazing. So fun. So fun. What a great experience. What a great story to tell to our children and their children going on and on. But It'll what be happened nice. then? What happened then? What happened then? Somebody appeared right next to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this dude appeared right next to me. You know what? Yeah, he uh, he then got hold of me. Well, I managed to escape for a bit, but that's a story for another day. A lot of them came after me. A lot of those <laughs> guardians came after me. But, hey, I didn't care because you know what? James... Didn't didn't steal the victory at that early part of the game. So the moral of the story is, get involved with the curse cards. Do not be scared. There is some pants cards in here. Really rubbish. But there is some absolute gold to be found in the curse cards. Get involved with them. Enjoy the experience and the story this game creates. And fully get behind it. Good stuff. Mine here. Oh, this game. So amazing. I would genuinely play this again and again and again just to keep on killing James. It was great. <laughs> Not personal though, is it? It brings joy to my heart. <laughs> uh, one of my favourite bits in this game actually though was with the Guardians. I think Pete had two or three of them after him and he kept on jumping between different teleports. <laughs> and they were just going back and forth and back and forth. Oh, it's amazing. The best thing about the Guardians as well, though, the more they come out, the uh, they get an additional dice to roll with. So at first, they can only move up to six spaces. Ah, it's not an issue. You can outrun them easily. Easy. Yeah, when no four problem. out, when there's four out, no. <laughs> <laughs> Run. Run and hide. <laughs> Just get involved with this game. It's amazing. Do it.